Hello, and welcome to Past, the podcast about those who would never rule. I'm Veronica Fortune, and this week's episode is East Asian Age Reckoning. So this has to do, obviously, with this mini-series. I was originally going to do generational names, and don't worry, I actually still will do that. But then I thought of something that confused me when I first moved to Korea. Why were my students, who said they were five, all not in kindergarten, but instead in a private English language preschool? The simple explanation is that they were all actually three or four, Trust me, they didn't look or act like five-year-olds. Until June of 2023, as in this month that's just happened, Koreans used a traditional age system that made a person one on their date of birth and then two on the first of the year. This change has actually been covered by a lot of news organizations, so I'll make sure to include links in the show notes. So in actuality, my students were correct about their age at least in the aging system that they were used to. It also confused me that they were all five, not some of them five and some of them four or some of them five and some of them six. Because yes, this system means that everyone in a certain grade is the same age. My daughter was born very early in the year in 2019 and my sons were born very late in the year in 2020. This means in Korea, my daughter would have turned one when she was born, and then two on the 1st of January 2020, when she was in fact almost one. My sons, on the other hand, would have been one when they were born and turned two on the 1st of January, when they were less than two months old. I guess this technically means I wouldn't have had three under two, though I doubt that knowledge would have helped with the sleep deprivation. This is an old system. It was originally developed under an astrological system in China. Everyone born in the same year is the same age. What's unique about the Korean system is that it doesn't use the lunisolar calendar. Instead, it actually uses the Gregorian calendar. This means when you are reading books written prior to the June 2023 change, the characters are likely a year or two younger than their stated age. Just a heads up if you enjoy reading translated Korean works. This also means I would have turned 41 this year, not 40. I'm okay with that either way. (laughs) In Korea specifically, there is a lovely celebration related to this, the Do Chap Yi. This is a celebration of the first 100 days or Bek Il of a child's life. It's a holdover from when Korea had a high infant mortality rate, and having an infant survive its first 100 days was a huge cause for celebration. Today, this is still held because it's a nice way to welcome a new family member, and some traditions are great. The brand new tiny human often partakes in a fortune-telling event where objects to predict their future career are presented. These include things like money for wealth or food for comfort, etc. And then traditional food is often served at these events. It's really yummy. Don't think for a second, though, that this age system lets anyone get away with drinking or smoking earlier than their legal age. I know it's a total killjoy. Not that I ever had to deal with it. I was 23 when I moved to Korea. ID cards still have a person's full date of birth on them. And while when you ask a person how old they are, they'll give you their age in the traditional age system. Everyone also knows their non-Korean age as well. And we'll tell you that if they ask, at least after the age of five. The system, though, started to change due to COVID-19, of all things. The requirement for certain ages to be vaccinated meant that some people were not able to get vaccinated because of their age, but at the same time were expected to be vaccinated because of their age, because of the two age systems. The government realized that they needed to move to the more internationally recognized standard for age. I'm not saying this system is better or worse, it's just the one that works internationally. So. If you're off to teach in Korea, your students will likely give you both ages when you ask them, unless they're little baby students. While the legal system has changed, cultural systems take a lot longer to change, so don't be surprised if your Korean friends still tell you both ages. And that was this week's This Too Shall Past. I'll see you all again soon.
Thank you for listening to Past. I can be found on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at PastPod. That's P-A-S-S-E-D-P-O-D. Please feel free to email me at pastpod at gmail.com. I have a Patreon that can be found at patreon.com backslash pastpod.